Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Gurpreet from DataWiz Canvas and today we are going to talk about data visualization. What is it and how is it used and why is it so important in our day-to-day -day life? Before I jump into that topic, I would like to set a foundation in terms of the world we currently live in. So the time period in which we are currently living is known as the fourth industrial revolution which means the digital world, where we are surrounded by data and information. From the time we get up in the morning to the time we get go to the bed in the night, data is everywhere and is part of our lives. Every one of us can relate as most of us carry a mini computer in our pockets in the form of smartphones. Use of data has been increased further with the recent pandemic with the global spread of coronavirus forcing people to stay indoor across the world most of the time. And internet has become a substitute of all the activities which were not accessible before. Did you guys know that during this pandemic, there has been increased by 70% of phone usage, which was a lot less before that time period. People are spending more time in the digital world watching news or on social media or buying and selling the products and services, which is kind of new normal in this digital world. So how can we make use of raw data and information around us as an individual or as a business? There is terabyte of data sitting around us or in the data centers, which is unused and is sitting as a burden. If it is correctly processed, this data can be a digital gold. That is where data visualization comes into play. In order to do that, we need to make sure that we have to process the data and make sure that the data is clean and accurate. Once it is done, we can use the data visualization technique to discover trends and patterns to make an informed decision. So, what is visualization? First of all, visualization is an extraordinary and powerful skill. And talking about visualization, it's about using our eyes to visualize things around us. It can be when we are walking on the road or driving on the road and we look at the road signs and visualize the information from those signs that are providing us so that we can make an informed decision. So if we talk in terms of data, it's about using our eyes more to visualize the information so we can see the trends and patterns in the data and connect with it. So according to Google definition of data visualization, it's a representation of data in the form of chart, diagram, picture, or videos to see trends and patterns to gain the insights from it. So how we can do that? So designing that information so that it makes more sense and tells a story which allows us to focus on information is the most important part of data visualization. You can say visual storytelling, it's really critical as it connects, with, connects us with the information differently, which is not just possible by hearing or by reading a text. Research shows that we tend to forget around 60% of the information right after hearing it, which is quite a big number. So let's have a look at this picture. What do we see in this picture? So if we look at it, some of us might say it's a leopard sitting on a tree. Some of us might say like it's a leopard camouflaged with the bark of the tree and it's, it's dangerous to go close to the leopard. So all of us are interpreting the information in a different way. But one thing in common is that there are more than million pixels on the screen with various shades of black, green, and brown. And yet in a moment, our brain can put together the picture with an information in a quick, reliable, and efficient way. Our brain can take these millions of pieces of information, analyze the pattern, and put them together to come up with an informed decision that it's a leopard sitting on a tree, or it can be dangerous if we go close to him. So just think how our brain processes that information just by looking at it and then making an informed decision. Do you know that our brain can process 
any visual, any visual in less than 100 millisecond, which is quite powerful, isn't it? And there is no such technology in this world which can do that in such an efficient and quick and reliable way. So our brain is the most powerful, you can say, visualization thing which our brain can interpret and come with a conclusion and help us to make an informed decision. So let's dig a bit deeper into how data visualization works with our brain power. As you can see in this image, our brain is basically divided into main two categories, left part and the right part. And the right part is our more uh, visual part, as you can see with the color combination on the right part of the brain. So that processes most of our visual abilities. And the left side is the part where most of the cognitive abilities are processed. So data visualization is so powerful because it creates the balance between the perception and cognition to take the advantage of brain's ability to process the information. And that way we are able to process the visual information much more rapidly than any other senses. Either it's reading or it's listening, hearing, whatever we can think of. Visual power is really important and it's more powerful than textual or hearing abilities. So did you know that after 72 hours, visual retention rate is 35 percent as compared to audio which is only 10 percent so that's how powerful visual abilities are for us to make sure that we understand what is presented to us and then we can make informed decisions out of it so that's why visualization is really critical and really important which is used to tell the story Either it's in our day-to-day -day life or if we are using the data, it helps us to tell a story that connects us with it and make sure we look at the patterns and trends to come up with an informed decision. So that's about visualization. And the next thing I want to share is about data and visualization. Always go side by side. And it's equally important to create a Data is equally important to create a nice visual for storytelling. As you can see in this diagram, we have all the different data sources on the left hand side and on the right hand side it's a great visual. So if we say our data on the left hand side is not processed correctly or it's not clean or it's not accurate, it doesn't matter how beautiful the visualization is. The outcome of that visualization will not be accurate and we won't be able to make an informed decision out of that visualization even if it tells a great story because the numbers in the visualization won't be accurate. So that's why data and visualization go side by side. Let's take an example. Let's have a look at this fancy kitchen which has the latest kitchen appliances to prepare food. That's the key, key purpose of the kitchen, right? To prepare food. And the quality of the food is based on the ingredients and the way we prepare the dish. If we use bad ingredients and not use proper measurements, then the outcome of the dish won't be that good. The same thing applies to the data. If the data is not processed correctly, it's not clean, it's not accurate, it doesn't matter how beautiful your dashboard is, it won't give us the desired results. So if we look at these examples, on the left hand side we are showing all the kitchen appliances and these are used to prepare the food and on the right hand side these are different data tools which are used to process the information, process the raw data, clean it up and make sure it's an, it's an accurate data set without any duplicates. So same way data tools are used to process the information presented to us. And if we look at the ingredients in the kitchen which are used to prepare the food and they are compared to the data which we receive. So this is the raw data similar to the ingredients and we need data tools to process it. And once that is done, we have used the right ingredients, measured it correctly, and the outcome of the dish, the process, is this final dish, which looks amazing and it tastes amazing. Same way, once the data is processed, cleaned, 
we use that information to tell a story using the data visualization, which is really powerful and has a great impact on the audience to tell the story. And from there, they can make a smart and informed decision. So that's, that's how we can relate that data processing, data tools, and the dashboard with our with a simple example when we prepare food. So now moving on to next part where I have shared one of the examples of a great storytelling dashboard. So this dashboard talks to us about the churn reduction rate, which is the iteration rate, how we can reduce the iteration rate. And if you see, it tells a story from top to bottom. And let's start from the top left corner. It tells us how we are doing on retention. And this chart tells us about the retention rate. And it highlights that retention is really bad as 96% of the clients are leaving us in less than a year, which is actually bad. And then we are talking about why are the clients leaving the company? And here you can see there's a 53% churn rate and it says that more than 50% is related to the customer experience. So that's basically the reason. And if you can see here, it says 23% is because of poor onboarding and 16% is because of the weak relationship building and 14% poor customer service, which adds up to 53% because of the customer experience clients are leaving the company. And then next, what is the cause of this problem? That's really important to know, right? So in this case, it says that the process was not clear and most of the client never had feedback on their performance. So there is something need to be looked into to redesign the process and work on the team training and redo on the KPIs of our team. And then telling the story further, we are asking the question and comes to a action like, do we really need to invest in retention or we can look for the new clients and this diagram actually shows us that if we go with the new clients it will cost us 2.9 times more than retaining our current ones so it tells you the action like it's it's really worth it retaining the clients rather than going to invest in the new clients and also it tells us that if you invest in the new clients or new shoppers they will spend around 20 percent whereas your existing clients or existing shoppers will spend more, which is 80 percent so it's a win-win in that situation so if you look at this entire dashboard it's visually appealing it's clear and it has a focus on the story and it's well structured and the color scene is bright and clear and it's easy to interpret and dashboard has a flow structure that tells a story and answer the questions that helps us to make a decision so that was a really good example of a good visualization which tells a story now let's look at an example of a poor dashboard design. And as you can see in this dashboard, there are so many colors used and the data is cluttered everywhere. It's hard to read and there is no proper structure, no proper flow, and all the information is just dumped into this dashboard. And it's really hard to read. So we, there is no white spaces, there is no proper banners which highlights the number which we are looking for no proper font selection. So it's, it's really messy and short. So that's why like it's really important to work on the visualization so that it can tell the story and make sure the audience you are presenting that story to. Because each dashboard will vary in the dashboard design based on the audience you are targeting. If you are targeting a senior management, they are looking at the high level numbers and telling the story based on their overall portfolio, how they are doing. But if we are talking to a operations, operations guy, they want to know about the details of their day-to-day -day transactions or day-to-day -day operations. So the design will be different. So keeping in mind two things mainly, one is the audience and then the context of the data and the context of what we are trying to present to the audience. These are the two main things. But another thing which we need to make sure we use the proper color selection, proper font, proper design, tell a story in a structured way, and ask a lot of questions to the business or to the audience for with whom we are creating this dashboard to create an impactful and effective dashboard which tells a story and the business can 
take an informed decision after looking at the dashboard. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Thanks for your time. Talk to you soon. Bye.